all, while we're waiting for Mark to get to open it up to the floor, I had a question because I, I just learned it today. I mean, I, maybe I should have learned before that, but I didn't. But, you know, your backgrounds of both speakers are really from an IT side. And one thing we've seen in our research, you know, one of the things, I happen to come from the OT side originally, but, you know, there's always this friction, as, as you mentioned, and I think other people have mentioned that's kind of known. But one thing that I see when I talk to OT people is they keep thinking, they, they almost phrase it that way. They'll say, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. They'll phrase it as almost like, well, IT wants to come in and do our security, and we don't want them in here. But when I talk to the IT people, I get a different view. Most IT people, and I just want to get how it is in your company, they don't want to actually manage the security in the plant. What they want is assurance that it's being managed because they're responsible to report. So I'm just wondering if that is the way it is in your companies and your perspective, or, or do, you, do you think, or are you really trying to push down the IT management? I mean, you know, yeah. not necessarily take command of the whole thing, but so. Yeah, I think, uh, is on? Yeah. I think you have you to turn it on, is it on? Yeah, I think it's on, yeah, Okay. Uh, I think from, you know, from our perspective, um, you know, it is about, it's a partnership between the, the two, right? So if we get past the, it's kind of like you walk into a, a, a dance and there's like half of the, and the other half is over here. They both know they want to dance, but they don't quite know how, right? Um, there's that going on, and the moment you get past that, then you can define essentially who's responsible for what. Uh, and when we look at the network as a whole and, and really what it means to, so they're driving value by pulling hydrocarbons out, right? And the IT side of things and the marketing side of things, you know, we look at it more from a data-driven perspective because there's, you know, that's really at the end of the day how we're going to be successful. And uh, that trade-off normally occurs right at the switch. From a physical perspective, that's kind of effectively where it is. So these PLCs and so on connect to the switch and the switch on up is where we should be coming in. And IT, you know, we, for example, I, and I'm not sure if, I'm, if I go over, you know, talk past you a bit on this, but, you know, I've never seen a layer two broadcast storm in my life until I went to an OT side of things. And, you know, you just don't see that. So they don't really know, uh, you know, they're really good at the engineering components. They're fantastic at it. Uh, and we are really good at the IT components. And there's a marriage that occurs right at that switch. And if we can come to an agreement on that, that is the roles and responsibilities and how we triage events, uh, then it becomes a good partnership. And I think just having that conversation initially was uh, the driver for the majority of the work that we do. Travis? And, and then the others can mention too, if you like. All right. Uh, yeah, so from our perspective, uh, pretty much similar to uh, Noble, we have a partnership between IIT and OT. Um, we think of it as a shared responsibility. Uh, you know, similar to safety, cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. So, um, <clears throat> from a network perspective, uh, they look to IT to help support them, and uh, because, like you said, you know, they have that expertise. Um, however, you know, I think. It comes down to having a, a good partnership because they, the OT folks also have some value as well. Uh, so that's what else. Yeah, if, <clears throat> excuse me, been talking too much. Um, if I could add on to what Travis said from, from a, a you know, technology provider perspective, what we really focus on and some keywords that Travis talked about is cyber resilience. Resilience, it's more encompassing than just the cybersecurity question. It's, you know, it's more of a resiliency from an operational standpoint, a cybersecurity standpoint, and a, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, a network standpoint. So um, at Security Matters, what we really focus on is, is providing a platform that's really cross-cutting all of those silos. Um, um, from our perspective, this IT and OT convergence has already happened, and there's really leaders and laggers of this convergence. And we provide technology that's really bringing um, people together in those three areas into one technology, providing different <laughs> views, different value, um, for all three areas, and that, we're really happy to do that with, with, with Travis and Southern California Gas. Galena, do, do you want to say anything, or it's up to you? 
So I think I want to bring a little bit of a nuance to the conversation. Um, I would say that shared responsibility is great and definitely there needs to be a partnership between IT and OT. Uh, but you need to have a clear responsibility as to um, who, who's the ultimate one that's responsible. And from my perspective, from Clarity's perspective, and you know uh, the customers that we've seen and that we work with, uh, in, in order for this exercise of providing cybersecurity to the ICS networks to work, um, it really needs to come from a central location from the top. Like the way we look at it is a network is a network. ICS networks are extremely different than the enterprise networks, but they are networks. And the same, from a risk perspective, the same principles that apply to the IT also apply to the OT. Now you need completely different tools, you need different risk profiles, etc. but it needs to be one centralized management. And the nuance that I want to bring into the conversation is actually something Travis that, uh, said a, a little bit earlier, is that you cannot just install the technology and let it be unsupervised, right? And I completely agree with that, but that being said, you also cannot expect the vendors to bring in uh, you know, five ICS cybersecurity professionals, because you know what, even if you have the budget, which you probably don't, um, good luck finding ICS cybersecurity specialists. <laughs> if you find any, send them our way, because we're hiring, okay? And so our philosophy is, um, be able to translate the obscurity and the uniqueness of the ICS networks and traffic and all the nice obscure things that come along with it and give that to your existing teams. Integrate that into your existing SOC and then give them the tools to actually be able to drive the workflow end to end. Now that does not mean that the engineers on the shop floor don't get additional benefits and use cases from technology such as ours and Brian's, but you need to have a centralized responsibility. That is the only model that we've seen that works. And trust me, you know, we were, we, I've been with you for a while now um, uh, here at this conference back in the day when I was with Siemens and you know things were very different four or five years ago. We would had to go site to site, so maintenance manager to maintenance manager. This is no longer the case. So I think that that discussion of is it OT, IT, who's managing the responsibility, cybersecurity, cybersecurity. It's managed by the chief information security officer in most cases. You get additional operational benefits by having a monitoring solution, but that is in addition to the responsibility. That's not instead of it. Okay. Uh, can I comment on that? Oh, yeah, please I'm not say. a big fan of central management. I like distributed. I like the view from central. They should be able to see everything. But if I was a business operator, I want to run my own show, kind of. And I would like to have that cyber OT, IT representation inside of my business. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't operate as I can be a matrix to a central organization. So my question that I wanted to start with would be, um, is anybody out there, I have two, I'll lay them out there and you guys can answer them. One is, is anybody working on a formal program, I don't see it in the education in the universities, but a formal program that blends these skills, OT, IT, security together, that's one. The second one is, these solutions that are monitoring substations or in our space or plants or whatever, when you try to scale this up, can somebody comment on how they, uh, especially like um, Travis here, uh, you've done a couple of sites, how do you see that progressing? How far will you go? Once you have it all rolled out there, right, it becomes kind of like a key thing for part of your NOC, I guess, or your SOC, and you're observing all this stuff. Um, do you think that's something that stays in place, or is it more just a study to clean everything up? And by the way, that's David Lawrence is from Duke Energy. Yeah. I don't know if you said that. We, we recognize him. <laughs> well, yeah, that, probably everybody knows David more than <laughs> So I, may, no, maybe no, just fine. to comment on the on the management aspect. So uh, having visibility does not mean management. Those are two different things. Having the responsibility and managing what configuration files go to the POC, that's a completely different thing. From a scale perspective, if you're asking whether we've seen that uh, across uh, uh, companies with central management, uh, yes. We have uh, a number of customers that are actually getting close to the 100 sites per customer uh, uh, visibility, and that's the only way to actually manage that is to have that central visibility from the top. Yeah, from, from our perspective, for some of our customers, um, you know, I talked about earlier this whole IT no two convergence has already happened, and most of the, you know, our customers are really, you know, large folks who are really leading the way in this convergence. And what we're seeing and working with are, are, are most folks have already made large investments in data analytics tools, SIM technologies, mostly on the IT or cybersecurity side. And really the value that you know, our technology is bringing 
is really bringing a value add to those investments and really bringing that ICS or operational technology and feeding those investments that they've already made into whether it's, you know, as I talked about, SIM technology or data analytics technologies, but also asset inventory technologies. So if you have a CMDB and most, <clears throat> most large organizations, you know, have, you know, want to do asset inventory, asset management, and they're really extracting data from our technology and feeding those investments that they've already made because they want to understand, you know, what's out there in their IACS networks. You know, when there's a new vulnerability, you know, how many devices, SEL, ABB, Siemens devices, do they have? What, what firmware version are they running and, and are those vulnerabilities applicable to them? So they can understand their risk posture and, and their scope. So, um, you know, from our perspective, you know, our technologies feed those investments and in other, other technologies, so. Yeah, yeah, so if I could just add to that uh, uh, from our perspective, what I meant, what I talked about today was, you know, mostly anomaly detection, but, um, you know, one of the things we've realized is that it's much more than that. Uh, I mean, I think many of these tools are very modular and you can use them for multiple purposes. It's not just for threat detection. There's operational value, there's asset inventory, there's vulnerability management. So I think, you know, as this technology evolves, you know, it will found, find even more value out of it. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the, we have this operating live in, in uh, four locations with it hosted essentially in three different uh, operations control centers. It's part of their daily activity now, right? Uh, the incident response process to look at these events collectively is, uh, is the, probably the biggest win that we've seen. We will not be taking this out. There's so many operational advantages to having a solution like this. And they have a sense of, if you will, distributed visibility maybe not distributed control in terms of how we define what, what it is we're specifically looking for, and nor would we want to give that to them, but a presentation of what's actively going on in the facilities that they're responsible for. And that, that is the, that, that's the, the primary driver and the value that they're seeing, and, and we get the value of knowing that, you know, there's, some curious, there's, there's security elements that are being taken care of and addressed. What about, just to follow up on David's other question, which was around the education. I, I don't, you know, oh, yeah. but let so, me, ex I mean, let me know, expand that okay. just for a minute. Sure. I mean, one thing is whether there's formal courses or some place that you learn that. But the other question, I think, because I, I, I kind of guess I think I know the answer to the first one. But the, uh, but is there a special skill, is there a special skill set that needs to be addressed, whether, whether yes. it's being addressed uh, or not? There are two special skill sets that uh, need to be innate in every analyst, right? One of them is a, is a, a purpose-driven uh, curiosity. If they don't have that, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna be really good at this job. Uh, and the other element is a continuous learning. It doesn't matter the, the material, right? If you have a sense of urgency uh, and you're curious about uh, getting to the root of things, you will, uh, you will do really, really well. Oh, and by the way, if somebody says, who's interested in working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, raise your hand, <laughs> then, you know, you go after those guys first, and then you figure out if they're No, I think you would eliminate those people in yeah, my I mean, mind. Yeah, and there are some, there are some specific, uh, that, you know, he, he's a SAN certified uh, ICS, right? So there, there, there are programs out there that are really, really well written. Um, and, and you can probably speak to more than that than I can. Uh, but, you know, so there's some good there's some good training out there, but you're never going to get the experience that you need unless you're on the floor. Yeah, there's some cyber physical programs. That's what they're calling them in yeah. universities across the country. Um, to your question, David, I think um, you know it's not cyber security MBA or, or, or undergraduate. It's really cyber physical, which is you know I think the next step in the evolution of our educational program. So there are a number of universities uh, are around the country offering that and highly recommend you go back to your, your, your schools where you live in and, and, and see if you can help support those programs because it's a very needed skill, absolutely. Mark, is there another question back there? Yeah, there's one over there. I'll there's get one it. right behind there's you, one Mark. Right one right behind you as well. Francis. Francis? 
Come on, stand up, yeah. ask stand the up. question. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so gentlemen, Rob and, and, uh, and Travis, um, now that you've made good successful investments in visibility technology, do you have a, can you talk to us about how you've gone to the next step and taking the, uh, the logging and the events that you get out of those products and contextualize them? So that they can be used to answer, you know, domain-specific questions that you know that matter to you, the way you manage risk, and you know, is it manual or is it automated? How are you doing that? Uh, so, would you, do you want to go first? Go ahead, you crack it up, and then I'll see if I uh, <laughs> if I can follow. Uh, okay, yeah. So um, we're we're leveraging this tool as one of many other sources. Um, we're feeding, you know, feeding, feeding it to from a cybersecurity perspective to the sim. And there's other logs as well um, to help give more context, and that builds the story, right? So, um, and, and it's, a, like I said before, it's continuing to evolve. Um, you know, we're looking at vulnerabilities and asset management. Um, we've only been at this three months. We, we were in production in October of last year, so. Yeah, so, so I mentioned, um, I, I think from a, you know, the biggest win that we've been able to capture outside of, outside of what Travis mentioned in terms of feeding this into a larger uh, engine, a larger security engine to perform some correlation. The biggest win really is to identify how traffic flows from one side to the next. Uh, and understanding that relative to what would be a proper security implementation, um, I'm speaking uh, particularly about like the Purdue model, right? Every you go from zero to, to four effectively, right, with security barriers or some type of enforcement zone between them, uh, and ensuring that those are in place and working, right? That you, can, you can go back and make the adjustments necessary, but that first component has to be the visibility to provide you uh, some insight on how to do that. Uh, that uh, along with uh, polling time, right? So for, for operations, then they've been able to look at this and specifically state where the where the fail points are relative to data meeting from one point to the, you know, we'll call it the central collective. Uh, seeing that and being able to improve on the way they poll and, and, and gain integrity in the data uh, really helps us from a sales point perspective, right? So at that custody transfer, for example, there's a meter on two sides, right? And we want to verify those numbers. and. This insight and that intel gives us gives us confidence in those numbers that we can state specifically and very accurately that this is what we sold you, uh, and this is what you owe us, kind of thing. So, uh, some 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 great shared uh, uh, advantages that just purely insight alone has given us. Right, the next steps we'll we'll see. I I don't know yet. Mark has another question. Yeah, actually, I didn't have a question. I'm Jay Reinhardt with Bechtel, but I wanted to take a stab at maybe an answer about how do you train people and how do you bring OT people and sensitize them and train them for cybersecurity and IT people understand how to apply what they do to OT because that was something that my that rattled around in my company for probably two years unproductively, but I've been surprised at a solution they came up with that worked well, so I thought I would share it. Um, which is first, the company got at a high level the recognition that we needed to bridge the gap between IT and OT. And then they sponsored a central group, which originally was just one or two people, uh, evangelists, who set up a facility. In our case, it was a, an ICS lab, so it was a little simulated process facility. Um, but it could be an existing facility. It just has to be a an, an OT environment that you can play with, right? So you maybe have some of that. So once they had that, then they started picking engineers and plan operations people and bringing them there and IT people and bringing them there at the same time for a week long class. And the, and the class that was, is ideal for this is the ISA 62443, which is ISA standard, which combines OT and cybersecurity. So the IT people came there, and for a week they were immersed in OT, and they could understand the, the environment, and the OT people came there, and they were being trained in cybersecurity, and they mixed well, and so the company's been doing that on and off uh, probably five or six times a year since they started, uh, and it's been really effective. Thank you, thank you for sharing. And from just, I guess I should mention as well, just from the point of view of the education, you know, 
ISA offers courses in this type of stuff. Uh, so does SANS, who's a partner of ARCs. They're out there if you want to talk to them. They've done many, many courses for both sides. It's, it's addressing both sides <laughs> of the issue. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. Hi, uh, Mike Radigan with Lido Cyber. Uh, first, Rob, I would like to nominate you to participate in uh, next year's panel on quantifying industrial cyber risk that I think Sid is going to conduct. <laughs> so congratulations on, on employing that methodology. Uh, my question is regarding cost of ownership of the solution. Uh, so the initial tuning effort that's required to get this, the system to deliver value. So again, I, I saw Travis had a six-month approximate time frame there. Hard to determine how much man hours went into that. And then you both are uh, dedicating some sort of operational staff to uh, monitoring alerts and responding to them. So kind of curious, what kind of quantity of events are coming out? How many you have to respond to? And um, you know, kind of give us an estimate of FTEs required to operate the solution. Okay. Thanks. Since you have the actual data, <laughs> I'm going to make it up so you go first. Sure. <laughs> So uh, short answer, it depends. <laughs> um, so we have, uh, we, the tuning took part in uh, really, it, it's, it's two parts. So we have it in our electric side, San Diego, and then we have it in the gas side. And we have a, a methodology, we work closely with the vendor to, to uh, establish. Um, and that's based on uh, the, the type of events, the protocols. Um, so, um, you know, I think to get that down, it took a, a few weeks, and uh, and then maybe I would say 30 to 60 days to really tune it and get it down to a manageable level where we're getting maybe four to six events per sensor that we can uh, you know take action on. Yeah, just to add on to what Travis said, uh, um, you know, it definitely depends. You know, we're lucky to to, to have a variety of customers, so we have a, a methodology of of how we do this, and as Travis said, um, it's, it's it's really determined by the protocol. You know, looking at your ICS or DCS protocols, they they behave in certain ways. Meaning, you know, it, in, in in the electric sector, it's there's you know very few masters and a lot of outstations. So that's very different than something like SMB and Windows, and it's very chatty and they're all talking to each other, which is used a lot in, in natural gas because a lot of them are Windows-based technologies or leverage windows. So we have a whole methodology um, that's really, um, that we've um, you know, perfected over our deployments since 2009. So um, um, that's kind of where we start. But when you deploy technology that, that is really seeing everything at these low level switches and seeing all the communications, I can tell you, 99.9999% of the time, you find things that should not be happening, happening, or policy violations, or misconfigurations. So that duration of really tuning it, you really have to work with the asset owner to really start start addressing those initial problems that you identify as once you deploy. Because obviously, you don't want to say, hey, that's normal, that's allowed because obviously you're working with a cybersecurity program, there's certain you know, rules and regulations or internal policies and best practices that they follow. So they want to, so you work with them to fix those problems. And so once they do that, and that takes time, obviously these are large companies with very busy people. But once that happens, then you really lock it in and tune it. And, and as Travis said, um, 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 you, you know, our technology, we focus on you know, security things and operational things. And from our perspective, it's all, all about feeding the right people the right information that they care about, right? So the SOC isn't going to get operational problems, you're right. The operational people aren't going to get those operational problems. The network people aren't going to get security problems. They're going to get network-related problems. So we have the ability to send you know, those three different types of alerts to the correct people in the right places. It's all, it's all about getting people the right information in the right format to the right technology. Yeah, I think from our perspective, uh, you know, it's around a two-month process to really see it uh, flesh out, right? So during month one, if you will, it's a deployment process uh, in, 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 in concurrent uh, or, or as that's going on in parallel, we're, in, we're uh, you know, interviewing all of the operation folks to understand what a day in the life is. 
uh, so that we can understand what their behaviors are, what their patterns are, what their requirements are from the systems, how they interact with them, and what data they're ultimately trying to uh, gather. Uh, and once we can marry those two things up uh, after month one, because we're effectively just in learning mode in both ways, right, on the technical perspective and on the human perspective, so we can see uh, after month one, where, where are, where's the delta? And how do we address the delta? It really, what are, what are we looking to uh, kind of uh, find or tune and, and address from that perspective? And that includes everything from asset management to packaging to uh, you know firmware uh, status and, and so on, right? And, and protocols as well. Uh, and once you know, so, so effectively, that's a, a one month process to to implement and learn another month to uh, really get to the point where you're fine-tuning and driving value that way. Uh, and then you should be able to see, you know, what, how valuable was this for you as a company, right? Uh, for us, it was, a, it, was a, it was a significant investment in a lot of core areas. Uh, we grew through acquisition in our onshore facility, so from an asset management perspective, huge gains almost immediately. Uh, offshore, uh, it's very, very, very valuable and, and somewhat of a requirement uh, based on where we're located in the world. Uh, so, it, you know, we saw benefit immediately, but it really takes a, a good two months for you to understand what, uh, you know, how best to get there. I don't know if this, did that answer your question? Yeah, so on, on average, I mean, the alert counts are, we break them up into two ways. They're either process integrity alerts or they're critical, uh, or I mean, security related alerts, right? And, uh, you know, there's a big difference between events and, and alerts or issues, right? It's like going to war and counting the bullets. You're going to get a lot of alerts, and that's not really the game plan. It's really understanding what, what they correlate into. Uh, do they correlate into something that requires a response? Uh, and I think, you know, if, you, if you've done the, the pre-work within those first couple of months, uh, you'll see that that number goes down. And then it becomes a very, very valuable tool, right? It is basically insurance, right? You are buying something that if you've done the pre-work and you've married those two responsibilities, right? We feed, I have a group of 10 people, that's it, right? And we cover, we're all over the world. So we, we got a lot of responsibility and, and, and not a lot of people to do it. So we don't, we can't move around. Uh, data or be responsible for, you know, or delineate work in a, in a very clear way. We muddy the waters in terms of responsibility, and there's a reason for that, right? We want to provide value, and, and we want them to know that we're on their side effectively, right? So when we go out and we, we deal with these issues, uh, we want them to be worthwhile and something very, very actionable. So if we do the work the right way, those true events should be low. There, there are no questions yet. Oh, I, have, yet. I have another but question. But I, I want to say something. Wait, I, I want to say okay, something after before one question. Last year we had this session and we were <laughs> unable to get end users to speak about this particular topic. So in a year, it's, I'm very impressed by the fact that we have two elegant speakers about leading the way in terms of innovation in this sector. And I think that's to be commendable. But I'd like to re redirect this to the audience. How many end users are now considering this type of capability? Um, can you raise your hand? You got to turn around, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, booth 44. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So raising your hand. So. Yeah, I see that. I see. If that I can thing. be of help, I'll be at the bar. And so uh, I mean, whiskey. I think that's. You know. So did. So did I help generate some questions now? You've got one right next to you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this is fantastic stuff. I appreciate you guys doing this. It's really good work. So now we, there's an immediate return on investment on understanding the inventory of your lost assets that are out there. I think there's money in it that we don't necessarily recognize. But then now you're, you're watching all the traffic. You've cleaned up everything. It's great. The numbers have gone My down. Question but I still don't necessarily have a secure system. You, you feel good about it now, I guess, but you're still vulnerable to things that are out there that you don't know yet that are gonna happen. Right. You have some intrusion, but I bet that the, sims, the, the, the SIM piece you have, I bet it's relatively slow, possibly, but I, I won't go there and say that yet. Okay. My, my question is, all these lessons learned you're gonna pull from this work, 
And it's almost like we're reverse engineering decades of boxes that have been out there and understanding the behavior, finally, right? We're understanding the behavior of these boxes and we're blending the skills. What's the next step? What are you going to do with future of the new designs of the future that are needed? I'd like to hear comments on that. Sure. Well, first I'd like to state that I can, I can guarantee you with 100% certainty that you will be attacked, right? It's just, you're going to, Duke Energy, of course, you know? Uh, we operate in Israel. Yeah, uh, we we operate in Israel. Uh, you know, it's kind of a tough neighborhood, right? So we're certain that we're going to get attacked, right? It's a it's a matter of how resilient are we to uh, to attack. So what we learn, uh, very much like in you know, this is like uh, when I try to compare this to how you know where we're at on the enterprise side. It's like night and day, right? We've done so much on the enterprise side for so long in cybersecurity that uh, we're now like looking at this and it's like, this is basically like early 2000s, which is great because you can do like, but you have so many better tools now that you can go address the same problems you, you've, you faced over a decade ago. Uh, the problem is that the attacks are, are more frequent uh, and they're mostly automated, so you don't, attribution is terrible. Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how do you take the information you've gained from a system like this and improve? It's simple, simply by looking at, you know, what is it you're trying to accomplish from a business perspective? Do you have the support and the buy-in to make the changes necessary to, to drive further into the security space? So when I look at it, I say, you know, hey, look at the progress that we're able to accomplish from, say, just secure remote access and, and supporting OT with third-party support to uh, work on product A or X, Y, Z, right? Maybe some uh, artificial lift issue. Uh, that then allocates resources and funding and visibility to what we're trying to accomplish because it becomes now a partnership. Security isn't doing it for the sake of security. They're actually improving operations. If by improving operations mean we change some of the ways, some of the architecture that the network is laid out today, that again improves efficiency. So it's all about driving efficiency into that system and leveraging security to do that, right? I always say, say that, you know, we, security, we drive IT. I, you know, IT is not gonna make a decision if, if security is standing dead against it, right? We drove these folks into cloud. Why? Because we think that the cloud providers can probably do security better than us deploying mail, you know, everywhere. So, you know, we drive those things and if we continually do that, um, you will see driving efficiency, and, and that's how I think we're, you know, we're going to make a, a, a bigger, better, uh, you know, security solution in the future. A very long-winded answer. Sorry. Let me maybe add something to that. So, having worked for for an ICS vendor myself, you know, um, a lot of times the question is, well, why don't we just fix the underlying infrastructure? Well, because practically we can't do that overnight, right? So I think that. There are a lot of recommendations and there are a lot of great standards and I have myself been part of, you know, creating some of those standards. But the reality is that we're dealing with legacy infrastructure and that's not going to change anytime soon. The ICS vendors are coming up with a lot of security improvements, but again, designing a controller takes five years. By the time you roll it out, you know, Duke Energy is not going to go and replace all of their infrastructure all of a sudden, right? Um, so, first of all, we need to acknowledge that over the last three to four years, we've, we've made tremendous progress, right? I mean, I got into the field of ICS cyber seven years ago, and I was like, what? The world runs on stuff that's, like, not encrypted and not authenticated. And we've come from, like, a complete black box to actually having visibility into those networks. Now, what's, what's important to kind of consider is the difference between the IT networks and the OT networks. We are actually, as defenders, at an advantage when it comes to the ICS networks. Those networks are predictable, right? You can actually have something that is uh, uh, fairly locked down when it comes to the expected behavior. Um, and, you know, the, the, the good thing or the bad thing, depending on how you look at it, is you actually don't need vulnerabilities to attack PLCs, right? You just need an engineering station that is going to load up a different code into the PLC and execute that, that transaction. So I know there's a lot of uh, bashing of ICS vendors. There are a lot of vulnerabilities, and I'm not saying that, you know, that's the way it should be, but as an attacker, I don't need a vulnerability to exploit a controller, right? All I need is to use the existing infrastructure. Now, the fact that we're actually in a predefined network that has, that we can compute what's supposed to 
supposed to happen in that network means that we can also defend, which is not a luxury that the folks on the IT side of the house have. Because no matter how many machine learning companies come out there saying that they're gonna de detect everything, mathematically it's not possible. It's an empty complete problem for those of you that have done computer science, right? We can do that in the ICS domain. With solutions um, uh, uh, such as you know, clarity, security matters, you can actually baseline that behavior. And we can identify the first time with a confidence, with 100% confidence. I can tell you when you have a new asset. I can tell you when the configuration is a different one. We can do that on the IT, right? And so we have to take advantage of that. And so having come from a black box approach to actually being able to see what the assets are over the last three to four years, that's tremendous. So I think we got to acknowledge that and then figure out how to actually leverage those capabilities. Yeah, one, one, of, one of the things I talk about is sometimes I think our community is obsessed with zero days, vulnerabilities, threats, and adversaries. That's never going to change. These, these, they, they are very real. You need to focus on you. That's what I tell my customers. Um, my background, I used to be an asset owner for 13 years. I, I just jumped into the vendor space. So, so I, uh, I became everyone's friend to everyone doesn't want to talk to me at conferences anymore, <laughs> which is a, an interesting uh, uh, transition over a year. But um, um, what, so I was, when I was working for an asset owner, I was actually the guy writing business cases, talking to our directors and C-level suites of, hey, I need X million, millions of dollars, and, and, and this is why. And um, I got beat up. I, they, they fired tons of bullets at me. And they said, Brian, we are, we are sick of the cost avoidance, uh, uh, that, that reason to invest in cybersecurity. We need more. We need hard dollar savings. Mm -hmm. And so I went back to the drawing board. I actually was researching this space back in 2014 is when I started at, at my asset owner. Um, and I, you know, th those executives, they care about, you know, the shareholders, all about the bottom line, because, you know, they have, you know, financial kind of backgrounds, and at the end of the day, that's, that's why we're all in business, you know, as asset owners. And so, um, you know, what, what I really talked to vendors back in two, 2014 was, what are the real ROI use cases beyond cybersecurity? You know, how can I reduce truck rolls? How can I make things more efficient? the network or, our, or, or manual processes. And so what we really focus at Security Matters is, is moving the conversation beyond cost avoidance, beyond you know, reducing the time to detection or remediation of some cyber threat. You know, both Security Matters and Clarity can absolutely help you, you know, if those things happen. But as an asset owner, I went into these meetings and said, well, if we have five incidents over the next five years, the lifetime of you know, our investment, we can reduce our you know, cost of void X amount of dollars. Well, then they told me, well, Brian, we've never had an incident on our operational side. So, 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 so you can't use that excuse anymore. So when you, if you're looking at vendors in our space, I think you really need to talk about those, those, those other uh, return on investments in those other areas of, of really going beyond cost and voidance. Um, you know, as, as Rob said, uh, you know, these threats are real, these vulnerabilities are real, and, and you, you have to take them seriously. But, but there are asset owners who've never had a, a, a real cybersecurity incident in their operational, you know, networks and areas for a certain duration of time. So really focus on how do you, you know, make networks more efficient, how to make your process more efficient. So that's my advice. Yeah, I, re I remember when I was, uh, when I first did my first security assessment in OT, uh, I come back with a report and I was a little bit like very panicked about it. And I talked to the, to the, you know, the main guy there, the, the operations manager, I'm like, hey, I'm like, David, we, we don't have any security here. Uh, he's like, Rob, we got security. Everybody has guns and there's snakes everywhere. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, that's, that's not really what I mean. But, yeah. I, I just want to make a comment relative to what, and, and relative to the question, um, just to I'll express my view on the thing, on, on an issue here. Uh, many, many of the benefits I hear, I talk to all of the suppliers of this technology all the time, uh, and I've asked the question, I'll be very blunt, I've asked the question, all the, I said, all the, many of the benefits that I hear, I don't want to say all of them by any means, are things that are found when you install the thing. And, and, you know, you go through, you find out there's equipment misconnected, there's devices you didn't know about, tremendous value. I think everybody understands that. 
Uh, I also am a big proponent for, I, I even tell people think of these systems almost as an automation system monitor. You know, forget about the cybersecurity. If, because if they, if something funny happens and, and, and a message is sent that's odd, they'll find it, and that's good. It's all very good. But as they were talking here, one thing that hit me, and, and it had to do too. I th maybe David with your, your question, but I, I, I echo your comment. You're never going to. You're always going to get a. You're going to get an attack. But not only that, you're going to have your vulnerabilities, and there's nothing you're going to do to stop that. And I don't care what you do about it. But the other side of the equation, which is really the important side, an important side, is the impact side. You know, lots of people talk to me about their solutions, and very often it's, well, if you put this in, it's going to solve all the problems, and, you know, everybody knows that's not true. But it's the impact side that's very important. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you find this, the sooner you hear that something funny happened, you can do something about it. Uh, the other comment in that sense that I've become very sensitive to lately is, you know, a lot of people, myself included, I'll say, for as I've grown in this industry, uh, you know, you tend to think of defense by putting, you, you tend to think of cybersecurity as putting in defensive things, fixing this, keeping patches in and all that, which is good. I'm not, you shouldn't do it. But there's also this active defense, and, I'm, and by the way, I, one of the suppliers uses that term, and I'm not trying to promote a supplier. It's just, you know, one thing is to have somebody there who is saying, my job is if something goes wrong to respond and take care of it. And I, I use the term active defense for that, as opposed to passive defenses where you say, I put in something to s stop things from happening. And I, 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 I think there's always going to be vulnerabilities there. To me, the one that got me recently was the one with the intel. You know, the, and that's nothing new. It's not isn't that they just ran it differently. That's a basic core thing that's been in yep. computers. For, I used to design things when I was young, design computers, actually. Yep. And you know, that was a big thing to try to get the speed up. Of course you do that. It's just who would ever think of that as a vulnerability? It, it, it's the well, in, Intel just announced direct cache access, which sounds a hell of a lot like the issue that we already have. Today, That's right. But it's, <laughs> but it's okay. a solution. Yeah. But so I personally think you're always going to have those things. But the important thing is, so I think you have to think of cybersecurity from the active side, which is I think the IT approach very often that you put in a lot of defensive. I call them passive defenses. Yeah. They're defenses, but they're they're there to stop things. But when something goes wrong, you also need a part of your strategy is you need people and teams and, and somebody that when something does go wrong, he can respond quickly and try to stop it before it causes damage. Right? There's a rate of return. And I think there's a lot of benefits in these. My point, yeah. just to make, finish my point, you know, because I think there was a question asked, and I've had the same question. I say, well, what benefits do you get after the fact? You know, the ongoing benefits. Now, you had a very good ongoing benefit when it had to do with the transfer because you're using it to collect data that you weren't collecting which is one benefit. But the other, and I'm sure it, it lets you sleep at night because if you know that something is watching it. But there's also this, this implicit benefit of knowing that if something does go wrong, you're in a better position to actively stop it. And Absolutely. I just think that having the comfort of that, and it takes time to get a system to where you don't get alarms that keep you up at night chasing nothing. You know, yeah. but once you get to that point, then you have that comfort, and it's not just a cultural thing. It's not just comfort of false security. It's a real security. It gives you at least something to tell you something's wrong, and you can do something about it. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in. I don't know if it added anything. Yeah, there's a rate of return on on your preventative measures, right? They're going to, they're going to, you will you will cap out, and and your your next obvious investment is is detective measures, and, and that's that's where we are. Yeah. Well, and just, just one nuance, because I think what you brought up is really important. Um, I mean, it makes all the difference in the world whether you can actually detect something on day one or day 57, because again, those attacks, especially 200. on ICS, that does not happen over days or even um, you know, over weeks, because once they get in, which is usually the not, not so hard part, then they have to figure out how the process actually works. And that does not happen overnight. So being able to know that someone's in and being able to actually investigate and stop that is a, is a huge difference. Again, very different than the way the IT networks work. And again, I think that's something that can be used to sell. Like I, I echo what Brian had said about the thing. If I were a plant manager, to be honest, because I've been in the industry for many, many years, it's very hard to just sell them on, it's like insurance, right? And that's kind of the situation. They say, well, we don't, nobody's gonna attack us, or 
we haven't seen any events, so therefore I'm not going to pay for I, I honestly don't meet with customers like that anymore. No one thinks that they're not going to be attacked anymore. No, but it, even is, if, it has changed a lot. Oh, well, that's good to hear, actually. Yeah. But I'm just saying, so you have to find other things to justify. And I think and once people describe it, then once you say, and what I have here is a way to detect that quickly. Yeah. I think that's a very important thing. Yeah. And that has real meaning. Yeah, just a quick comment on that. So uh, as, as uh, intrusions happen, especially very in, um, high visibility ones like Ukraine, you know, I think many of the companies will start having co conversations at the boardroom and they will trickle down. Can we detect something like this in our environment? What are we doing? You know, so I, I feel, you know, with this technology, we feel more confident that we can detect um, things in the IC ICS environment. Any one last comment on, on, on Sid's comment about uh, active defense? Um, I think the next step, obviously, we're, you know, our technologies are, are, are passive in nature and we feed alerts to other, other technologies. And I talked about how people have made investments in those other higher level technologies. I think automation and orchestration is a very uh, rapidly moving technology space, especially on the IT side. So I know some of our leading customers are really feeding events and alerts into those ty types of technologies and orchestrating different playbooks of actions f to happen, whether that's a firewall rule change, whether that's, you know, turn off the, the switch port. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that th those are the actual actions, but there's playbooks of send emails, a man in the loop, oh, yep, I want to do that, I want to execute that. And I think so that that is the, you know, uh, you know, we're providing that, that that low level context of events and alerts, and once again feeding those you know newer technologies and other investments like automation or orchestration to kind of help with what uh, Mike was asking with the people and how many people do you have managing it because there are you know all, all alerts that come in and obviously any automation really ha helps with that. You know that was an absolutely perfect segue for the next session. I, I, before oh, I thank the panel. No. No, because our next session, it's not one I'm managing, it's somebody, it's one being managed by Harry Forbes, but the focus is around software-defined networking mm -hmm. and things like that. So that, and you know, one use case there, one idea is if you see something funny, you can now individually isolate that asset, mm -hmm. you know, completely. Unlike having the traditional firewalls, maybe you can put in rules to do it, but it's harder than just being able immediately to say, I don't want anything going on that yeah. asset. So. Thank you for the segue. <laughs> we have we have one more question, and then we get oh, okay. we have to close. Okay. Where are you? Right here. Oh, okay. I am Bala from Equate Petrochemical Kuwait. I'm here uh, not to ask a question, but I want to share with you the convictions my company had. Uh, conviction number one: OT has to follow IT, no doubt about it. And most of you will agree with that. Conviction number two: there were a lot of debates including the lady Galina who was saying that uh, uh, cyber security, there should be a centralized agency responsible for that. But ultimately, if you see, who should take the lead on the OT side? Who is ready to accept the impact? The reliability of the OT network, which is ultimately the core production of core business of the industry, or uh, the reliability or the, uh, the safety of both sides are going with the OT, OT personnel, and they are responsible for that. If you take uh, Microsoft or if you take uh, the computer hardware uh, producer like HP or Dell, when you go and talk to them, why you keep changing the platform? We are used to 20 years or 30 years of life cycle. Every three years, four years, we have to keep changing the hardware now. And they said, we don't care. Your process control community is just 3% or 2.5% of our business. So the balance, 98% is the, uh, the other than process control. Similarly, the IT folks here, they don't want to confine themselves. They don't want to curtail themselves to OT side. OT is our future. Our career is limited if we commit ourselves to OT. So we want to be in the IT field. If you want us to guide, we are ready to guide you. If you want our, our knowledge, we are ready to share. But please don't ask us to take the lead on the OT network. OT guys, you take the lead. We are ready to share the knowledge. So I share with you. You have to bring them together, IT and OT folks together to improve the knowledge. But ultimately, who should take the lead? It is a OT force that, that should take the lead on the OT side. So this is conviction number two. This is what I want to share. Just a comment on, uh, we're, gonna, we're done, but I just want to make the comment. That was another great comment, almost like a segue, but not quite a segue, that yesterday we had a very, very good, dis we had a very good presentation with several. I mean, we had all good presentations, including today's, I'd say. 
but uh, there was one point that the people from Dow made, and it had to do with the organizational challenges. You, know, yeah. you, you can do that, and, and he had made a comment, actually, which was very interesting. He comes from an IT background, but he's actually an engineer, a chemical engineer. So he's probably more from the manufacturing side, I guess. But he did say you have to, there's a lot, you have to try to get OT to accept IT lead. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a cultural change management issue. So I think a lot of people agree with what you just said, but it's, it's, you have to work that. It's a change management issue to get people to accept that. But he also made the point too, it's the business, at Dow it was the business's responsibility in the end. Sure, but there is a difference between accountability and responsibility, yeah. right? Correct. So, you know, I don't disagree, uh, I just, it's a shared responsibility, <coughs> right? At the end of the day, the guy standing in front of the board describing cybersecurity events is not an OT guy. Correct. Right? Uh, so it's a shared responsibility, and, and we want to help, not own. Okay. That's it, Sid. Okay. Well, Time's up. Uh, would you join me in thanking the panel and the thank presenters? You very, much. very, very good. Thank you very much.